How y'all doing? All right. Um, I'm not going to read anything from the book or books. But in, um, in uh, How to Be Drawn, there is a poem called American Sonnet for Wanda C. And that's the poet Wanda Coleman. And so uh, she wrote these American sonnets really throughout her career. And she just numbered them. And they were all over the place. And in fact, I, when she was interviewed about like, how would you give instructions for American sonnets? She, what, she didn't focus on syllabics or even rhymes. She just had rhythms and then said places and devices have them. So you got to have rhythms. And uh, tones or shadings of attitude and issues. And then musical taste, which is always weird. And then eventually she was like, I think they're just kind of jazz sonnets where I'm trying to blow my soul, she said. So I had written a couple of sonnets uh, on November 10th, and then on November 12th, and November 13th was her birthday. And so uh, I was asked to kind of read. I knew her, and I, she was a wild, uh, sometimes difficult, but always magical person. And so they were like, will you come and read? And so I was reading these poems, and I was like, oh, these are American sonnets. And so from then on, I've just been writing my version of uh, the American sonnet. So I'm gonna just read those. And they do all have the same title, but they're not, it's not a sequence. They just happen to have the same title. <laughs> and so I guess, I mean, I, what am I thinking? They're just sort of like little boxes where I put all my anxieties and perversities and concerns. Um, so like, you know, I thought, oh, I'm not gonna explain it. I'm just gonna write a poem about what I'm doing. So that's the spirit of it. Like just put everything inside the little box, even an explanation of what the poems are. So I'll start with that one. And then I'll just, you know, read around. And if I feel all right, I'll stop there. And if I don't, I do have another poem that's not in a book, but you know, I think it's all right. I could end with that one, but we'll see. All right, and yeah, a lot of them I haven't, you know, I think I've read maybe one or two of them out. All right, American Sonnet, for my past and future assassin. I lock you in an American sonnet that is part sanctuary, part panic closet, a little room in a house set aflame. I lock you in a form that is part music box, part meat grinder to separate the song of the bird from the bone. I lock your persona in a dream inducing sleeper hold while your better selves watch from the bleachers. I make you both Jim and Crow here. As the crow, you undergo a beautiful catharsis when you are trapped with your echo one night in the gym. As the gym, the feel of crow shit dropping to your floors is indistinguishable from the stars falling from the pep rally posters on your walls. I make you a box of darkness with a bird in its heart. Voltas of acoustics, instinct, and metaphor. It is not enough to love you. It is not enough to want you destroyed. Um, American Sonnet for my past and future assassin. Probably ghosts are allergic to us. Our uproarious breathing and ruckus, our eruptions, our disregard for dust, small worlds unworld in the corners of our homes after death, our warriors, weirdos, anti-heroes, our sirs, sires, our sires, sidewinders and whiners, winos and wonders become dust. I know a few of the dead. I remember my sister's last hurrah. I remember the horror of her head on a pillow. For a long time, the numbers were balanced, the number alive equal to the number in graves. After a very long time, the bones become dust again, and the dust after a long time becomes dirt, and the dirt becomes soil, and the soil becomes grain again. This bitter earth is a song clogging the mouth before it's swallowed or spat out. Uh... American Sonnet for my past and future assassin. Actually, I'm gonna tell you that this place, actually, there is a place like this. I just changed the names, but in South Carolina, there are places that like in the daytime are beauty parlors and then at night they're juke joints, still in 2017. Uh, American Sonnet for my past and future assassin. After you turn off Shop Road, 
where the one flag mailbox leans forward like an old goose contemplating her next step, ride for like half an hour or more beyond Starlight and Harlem Street, and I'm told you'll find inside what is Betty Jo's fish and chicken shack by day, a mobilized after hours juke joint full of the kinds of dancers and drinkers, loners and lovers who have probably never listened to a poem or banjo at length. In this, we may be alike assassin, you and me. We believe we want what's best for humanity. I'll probably survive dancing with the kinds of people who must find refuge among the rancor and oil of a fish and chicken shack, but assassin, they'll probably murder you. Do, I ask, do you ask why you should die for me if I will not die for you? I do. I do. Uh, let's see. American Sonnet for My Past and Future Assassin. The earth of my nigger eyes are assassinated. The deep well of my nigger throat is assassinated. The tender bells of my nigger testicles are gone. You assassinate the sound of our bullshit and blissfulness. The bones managing the body's business are cloaked until you assassinate my nigger flesh. The skin is replaced by a cloak of fire. Sometimes it is a coat of river or rainwater that cloaks the bones. Sometimes we lie on the roadside in bushels of knotted roots, flowers, and thorns until our body is found. You assassinate the smell of my breath, which is like smoke, milk, twilight itself. You assassinate my tongue, which is like the head of a turtle wearing my skull for a shell. You assassinate my lovely legs and the muscular hook of my cock. Still, I speak for the dead. You will never assassinate my ghost. Um, let's see here. Uh, American sign for my past and future assassin. So, you know, eventually I can get a little weird inside of here. When MLK was shot, his blood changed to chain wherever it changed to change wherever it hit the floor. Like the others, Jackson and Abernathy gathered a few of the coins for themselves. A few sank in the pockets of the detectives and forensic scientists, reporters. A maid sold the penny she found for a pretty penny on the black market. It is in a display case beside the bullets Du Bois kept in the gun under his bed. Bird got so high on horn, he disappeared. X was as tall as a tree colonizing the landscape. In the game of chicken, two drivers speed towards each other, and if the one who is chicken does not swerve, both drivers may die in the crash. This country is mine as much as an orphan house, as much as an orphan's house is his. Uh, American sonnet for my past and future assassin. I am clowning the reverend of high school cafeterias in a ricochet of industrial sign lit by the fire smelling paper piled in a big sink. Were I sober, wrong in a dull jersey of glee and sadness that detectives the prints of spray cans and parking lots where the light of security grazes our teeth and futures. If the night were not older, brother, I would have pulled my knife on the bully pulpit, found a night job walking the halls of the high school, vomiting tears and fire, a rose hound, the tongues loosened and flopping in tops after games and lectures, awaiting with the stolen to appear twinkling in a layer of mischief. So traumatized, trauma delights us. Beneath the marvelous, tremendous, stupendous, horrendous, undiscovered stars above the carnival, we don't know how else to live. Uh, so it's enough of them if you're just like, what the hell? Just like, wait for, wait, wait for the next one. <laughs> American signing for my past and future assassin. A brother versed in ideological and material swagger Seeks dime ass trill bitch starved enough to hang, do ragged and smoke she can smell and therefore inhale and therefore feel. Must ride shotgun pouring a fountain of bass upon the landscape. Must be fat assed, fearless and God fearing, an ancestral insurgent, clean as new money, a cryptographer, a storyteller, a glossy sleeve. There will be woo to jewelry you're hearing. There will be stacks of folded longing amid twilight verbiage and parking lot smelling of live wire, liquor and fire, accompany a brother. 
Shout outs to vixens and bitches out there twerking for fucks in Bluff Estates, Washington Park, Starlight, Sharp Road, Joe Frazier, Harlem Street. This is daddy's boy. Who won it? Um, American sonnet for my past and future assassin. Rilke ends his sonnet, archaic torso of Apollo, saying, you must change your life. James Wright ends lying in a hammock in William Duffy's farm in Pine Island, Minnesota, saying, I have wasted my life. Ruth Stone ends a moment saying, you do not want to repeat my life. After the opening scene where a car bomb destroys the family of the black detective, there are several scenes of the hero risking his life. A shootout in an African-American folk museum retrospective of Bill Trailer's art and life. A shootout in the middle of an interstate rest stop parking lot where New Jersey farmland bleeds into Pennsylvania church and mountain life. In each case, the shooter escapes with his life. Now define life. Um, American sign for my past and future assassin. Because I smiled but never spoke my love to you, I dreamed of Lorca riding a horse with broken teeth on his way to become a firing squad's target. Neither horse nor poet was afraid. One lived with the mouth full of bullets, the other lived with his mouth around a bit. I tried to warn my assassin against framing events as beginning, middle, and ending. Better situation, crisis, and coping mechanism. Blackjack meets bone, blackjack breaks bone. The bone is beaten blind as a blackjack. I lay with my back to the careless tongue of a suburban roadside with the white knee of the moon against my chest. Lorca's bullets are more powerful than the bullets of assassins. I haven't said what I wanted to say about loneliness. Uh, let's see here. Uh, do I need to keep saying the titles? American sign up for my past and future assassin. Why do you keep bugging me? Actually, let me just tell you what it is. It's a stink bug. Uh, why do you keep bugging me, you stank, minuscule body of musk and muster and deliberation crawling over reason and possessions I have and have not touched? Should I fail in my insecticide, I pray for a black boy who lifts you to a flame with bedeviled tweezers until mercy rises and disappears. You are the size of a stuttering drop of liquid. Milk, machine oil, semen, blood. Yes, you funky stud. You are the jewel in the knob of an elegant butt plug. <laughs> Snug between pleasure and disgust. You are the scent of rot at the heart of lovemaking. The meat inside your exoskeleton is as tender as Jesus. Neruda wrote of a nipple perfuming the earth. Yes, you are an odor, an almost imperceptible ode to death, a lousy, stinking stink bug. Let me see how we're doing here. Um, probably all of our encounters are existential jambalaya which is to say, can a brother survive? Would you rather have happiness or freedom, pain or boredom? Would you rather hitch your rotten rope to a wagon or hitch your rotten wagon to a leash? After blackness was invented, people began seeing ghosts. When my father told me I was among God's chosen ones, he was only half bullshitting. Probably twilight is as different as a father is from his son. Probably twilight makes blackness dangerous darkness. Probably the dark blue skin of a black man matches the dark blue skin of his son the way one twilight matches another. Um, American sonnet for my past and future assassin. At one point I was like, I'm just gonna put it all in one poem and then I'll be done. But I actually think I'll probably write these things all year or maybe for four years. Um, so this one's, you know, it's like an absidarian. Arians, Betty Crocker, Betty Lovett, Blowfish, Briar Bushes, Bubba's, Buckras, Archie Bunkers, Bullhorns, Bullwhips, Bullets, all cancers kill me. 
car crashes, cavemen, chakras, crackers, discord, dissonance, doves, Elvis, ghosts, the grim reaper herself, a heart attack while making love, hangmen, hillbillies exist, lilies, Martha Stewart's, Mayflower maniacs, money grubbers, Gwen Brooks the mother, my mother's as bipolar as bacon, pancakes kill me, phonies, dead roaches, big roaches and smaller roaches, the sheepish, snakes, all seven seas, snow avalanches, swan songs, tonsillitis, killer wasps, yeehaws, you now and then, disease. Uh, let me see here. Uh, I'm going to put sciatica in there, too. Let's see. Uh, I think I'm on. Let me see what else I got here. Then, you know, I'll try. Um, let me see here what else I got. I think I got a few more before I try this other one. Um, American Sonnet for My Past and Future Assassin. You were like a pharaoh whose promise to put people back to work means he will have them die building his pyramids. Like you ain't ever made your own bed. Like building is the same as making to you. Like property means more than building. Like truth can only be seen when you look at it. You are like someone trying to distinguish a zebra from a horse without mentioning the stripes. Like stupidity is a tool of some kind. Like language is some kind of weapon like a new wave film where the actors say nothing but who can say and who can say who can say the whole time. <laughs> like truth is a matter of language. Like you don't talk to yourself. Like you think God can't read minds. Um, and uh, Oh, so that means I should stop. I'm gonna stop there then. Uh, one more and then I'll try this, this poem. Looks like I got a little time. All right, um, this is the last one. American Sonnet for my past and future assassin. I remember my sister's last hurrah. She joined the black people I've grown tired of losing. They were going upstairs together, all the dead from parts of Florida, Ferguson, Brooklyn, Charleston, Cleveland, Chicago, Baltimore, everywhere. Someone is prey in all of our encounters. I have a brilliant memory and better imagination. And though there is always someone I cannot name because he is no longer with us, because she is no longer with us, I know the names alive are like the names in graves. Probably ghosts are allergic to the blindness you've hitched your wagon to. Because we are made of earth, don't you and I share a loss, sweet assassin? Aren't you and I haunted? Sweetness, 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 poor tattered heart, old poison heart. I've almost grown tired of talking to you. Um, here's one more. I'm not sure how to hold my face when I dance in an expression of determination or euphoria? And how should I look at my partner, in her eyes or at her body? Should I mirror the rhythm of her hips or should I take the lead? I hear Jimi Hendrix was also unsure in dance despite being a beautiful human and especially attuned. Most black men know this about him. He understood the rhythm of a Delta farmer playing guitar in a juke joint around 1933, as well as the rhythm of, of a Bohemian Negro born after Hitler and a nuclear bombs, in addition to the trauma of being born black, playing a guitar alone in a small uptown or downtown apartment, whatever. I'm just saying I don't know how to hold my face when I dance, do you? Um, so I'll stop there and then just, you know, end with this, uh, the kinds of poems I was writing before November. And so this one is uh, called Ars Poetica with Bacon. <laughs> There's nothing to note, really. I don't have to say anything else about it, I guess. Fortunately, the family, anxious about its diminishing food supply, encountered a small, possibly hostile pig along the way. The daughter happened upon it first, pushing its scuffed snout against something hidden at the base of a thorn bush, a blood-covered egg maybe, or a small rubber ball exactly like the sort that snapped from the paddle my mother used to beat me with when I let her down. 
At the time, the father and mother were tangled in some immemorial dispute about cause and effect, who'd harmed whom first, how jealousy did not in fact begin as jealousy, but as desperation. When the daughter called out to them, they turned to see her lift the pig, it was no heavier than an orphan, from the bushes and then set it down in their path. They waited to see whether the pig might idle forward with them until they made camp or wander back towards the home they'd abandoned to war. Night began to fall upon them. Consequence is the word that splintered my mind. Walking a path in the dark is about something the way a family is about something. Like the pig, I too wanted to reach through the thorns for the egg or ball, believing it was a symbol of things to come. I wanted to roll it in my palm like the head of a small red bird until it sang to me. I wanted to know how my mother passed her days having never touched her husband's asshole, for example. Which parts of your body have never been touched, I wanted to ask. I'd been hired to lead the family from danger to a territory full of more seeds than bullets, but truth was, in the darkness, there was no telling what was rooting in the soil. Plots of complete silence, romantics posing in a field bludgeoned by shame. The heart, biologically speaking, is ugly as it pumps its passion and fear down the veins. Which is to say, starting out, we have no wounds to speak of beyond the ways our parents expressed their love. We were never sure what the pig was after or whether it was in fact not a pig, but some single-minded soul despair had turned into a pig, some devil worthy of mercy. Without giving away the enigmatic ending, I will say when we swallowed the flesh, our eyes were closed. Thank y'all.